Hey, it's Dave Atkinson here, and on this lesson I'm going to talk about how to actually understand and read the charts that I'm using um, for these polyrhythm videos that we've been doing. And it's a great way to actually make your own polyrhythms. So once you understand them, I challenge you to start creating your own. I kind of came up with this concept. I, had a, I was in a progressive rock band a while back, and one of the guitarists asked me if I could follow his guitar pattern with my foot, which was a seven pattern, and um, while playing 4-4 four, four on my hats and, and, and my snare drum. And it took me so long. I kept practicing it and practicing it, and um, I wasn't writing anything down. And it wasn't until I started, okay, thinking, i got to actually write this down before I started actually picking it up. And once I actually wrote it down and actually put it, the notes where they should be and counted out where the bass drum should fall over top of the hi-hats, uh, once I started doing that, I picked it up just like that. Uh, so it took me a long time to do. That's why I wanted to kind of explain this to you so you can do it right away so you don't have to have that learning process that I had. Now, by no means is this my method. I mean, it's on Wikipedia, I think, as well. It's a very common way of doing it, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So basically what you want to do is create a chart with a bunch of boxes in there. Now, each box is going to represent one count. Don't worry about no values. Don't worry about time signatures yet. Just create this box chart, all right? Start with one line. That's what I do. And I start usually with a four pattern on there. And the reason why I start with a four pattern is because it's common. It's what most people are used to. And um, it's pretty much the easiest place to start. So start with a four pattern on the top. And what I like to do is I like to put an X every four counts. OK, so every four boxes put an X. And this is just, like I said, the foundation. Another thing I like to do, and you'll notice on my charts I have this, is every four boxes I have a different shade. So I start with four boxes with a shade of dark gray, then I go four boxes of white. The reason why I do that is it helps me mentally visualize where each bar changes, okay? So four counts, if you're counting it in quarter notes, represents one bar. So every four counts, I kind of change the color of them just so I can get a bit of a visual understanding of where the measures and when the bar repeats. All right, so now let's add a second line to this. Now, the second line can be any count you want. You can do a seven pattern, you can do a five pattern, you can do a six pattern, a three pattern, a nine, an 11 pattern. Challenge yourself with whatever, okay? And for the ones that I've done, let's just take the five pattern, for example. Okay, what I've done there is I have taken a pattern of five that repeats every five counts. And on this one, it was one, two, three, four, five. So on the first count and the third count, I put an X. Okay, now every five counts, I repeat that pattern. So every five boxes, I will start over again and I'll keep going. Now what you're going to realize is that these two X's or these two starting points of both patterns have to line up at some point. So if you're doing, say, like a 13 pattern over top of a four, it's going to take quite a few bars for it to line up. Keep that in mind. With a three, or sorry, with a four over five, it takes 20 counts to line up. So in this situation, it's going to take five bars or 20 boxes for it to line up. So what I'll do then is I'll create 20 boxes and that's my actual polyrhythm right there. And I know once I get to the end of that measure or the end of this these group of boxes, it's going to actually repeat. So the challenge here, once you know, understand all this and you're actually um, beginning to figure out how to use this chart, is to make your own. Don't just take the ones I have. I've only given you like three examples on this website, but you can literally put in your own X's wherever you want. You can make a pattern of five that has an X on one, two, three, four, and just leave out the five. So then you're playing one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, over top of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You know, there's so many options you can do. To even challenge yourself further, add a third line of boxes in. So now you're doing a group of four on the top, you're doing a group of five on the, in the middle, and on the bottom, say, try to do a group of seven. So now you're playing a four against a five against a seven. Really, really tricky because at that point, you're going to have to start using three different limbs. You know, you can even do four bars if you wanted and have one hi-hat foot doing one pattern, your bass drum doing another pattern, your right hand doing another pattern, and your left hand doing another pattern on top of that, you know? So, I mean, literally, there is just endless possibilities. Challenge yourself with it. Have fun with it. I hope it makes it clear and more easy to understand and follow along with. So that's it. I hope you guys have a better understanding of polyrhythms and how to actually notate them. Come up with your own and stick around because I'm going to be giving some more lessons on different polyrhythms in the future. I'll see you then.